Trump threatens the destruction of North Korea, a local college caught manipulating test scores, and Hurricane Maria heads toward Puerto Rico. This is OU Nightly. In his first address to the United Nations, Donald Trump today lashed out at North Korea, Iran, and Venezuela. In his 40-minute speech, Trump threatened to totally destroy North Korea. Yes, the president said the Iranian government is an economically depleted rogue state and claimed the socialist government of Venezuela has brought that country to the brink of collapse. Nightly's Anik Zoha is in the news center with more. Anik? Thanks, Ashley. In his fiery remarks on North Korea, Trump once again today referred to North Korean leader Kim Jong-un as Rocket Man. He also told the General Assembly he will stand firm on the idea of America first when it comes to the U.S. foreign policy. And he called on the U.N. to change. The United Nations must reform if it is to be an effective partner in confronting threats to sovereignty, security, and prosperity. Too often the Trump's focus criticism altered later at a UN leaders luncheon when he praised the organization, saying it has unlimited potential. And a 7.1 magnitude earthquake rattled central Mexico this afternoon. The epicenter was near Puebla City. That's about 75 miles southeast of Mexico City. The population is just shy of 3 million people. There are also reports of collapsed buildings, people trapped, but so far there have been no deaths. And next on Hurricane Watch is Hurricane Maria in the Caribbean, which is already a Category 5 storm. Maria has already killed at least one person in Guadalupe, and two are missing in La Desirade. This afternoon, winds reach 165 miles per hour as Maria moves to St. Croix. Puerto Rico is expected to have catastrophic damage since Hurricane Irma has crippled them already. Puerto Rico Governor Ricardo Rosello says no generation has seen a hurricane like this since San Felipe II in 1928. And Cal, in all honesty, I'm not a huge fan of these back-to-back -back earthquakes. Hopefully it'll end soon. Back to you all in the studio. Thank you, Anique. An audit reveals test results were altered at Oklahoma City Community College after a tip from a college employee an Oklahoma City-based accounting firm investigation found multiple students received altered scan sheets, including names that were erased and replaced. An OCCC spokesman confirmed the audit's findings. So far, the investigation has not, has not resulted in any arrest or criminal charges. And the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Tom Price, is in Oklahoma today. His three-day trip is part of the federal agency's integral relationship with tribal governments. Price plans to meet with tribal leaders while here and will host a meeting of the Secretary's Tribal Advisory Committee. He hopes to discuss public, public health challenges, including opioid, opioid addiction, and is expected to emphasize the need to secure access to high-quality health care. And Kaylee joins us now to tell us the latest on what's been a very active hurricane season. Well, that's right. Thanks, Cal. And right now, fortunately, Mexico has not seen too many effects of those hurricanes. However, we do have that 7.1 magnitude earthquake centered in Puebla City. This is a map right now of her or sorry, earthquakes in the last 24 hours. Fortunately, there have not been any recorded aftershocks, but those people are reeling right now from that 7.1 magnitude. Taking a look out to the tropics, we now have Tropical Depression Lee, and that's out in the far uh, eastern Atlantic. And then our big story is Hurricane Maria. Right now, she's sitting at a Category 5, moving across the Caribbean. And then we are still keeping a watch on Jose, which now has been a named storm for over two weeks. Taking a look farther at Hurricane Maria, as it is a Category 5 and expected to move, but I will have more on that coming up. But for now, back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Kaylee. The hurricane that lasted less than 24 hours has a cleanup process that is predicted to take as long as 120 days. Savannah went and talked with University of Houston students to see how they are holding up. These are the memories that have been tossed out on the street all over southeast Texas in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. But at the University of Houston, students are picking up the pieces. Uh, yeah, I was affected and my family was affected. We lost our house and we had another family member that also lost our house. On a student newscast, cougars are being told to stick with it and stay strong. Many of us are rebuilding our lives following Harvey's destruction 
and the road to recovery will be tough for many, but we will remain Houston strong. Despite the destruction left behind, students are trying to keep in high hopes. You know, it made the fear like my roof can cave in at any moment real for me. You know, like I can come home and then my roof is in my room. We can bounce back from this. We will be fine. We just need to all come together. But as of right now, all the help that we can get is needed. The university closed for 10 days due to water damage, but is now back open for students. Savannah Cosette, OU Nightly. Our academic standards are still widely being used in some form by most states that first endorsed it. 45 states opted to use Common Core and only 8 of those have moved to repeal the standards since then. This despite the continued debate over whether they are truly improving student performance with math and reading. In Oklahoma, although, Governor Mary Fallon signed a bill in 2014 to repeal the standards, saying it was too controversial. Yesterday, we reported on a public lecture on constitutional crisis. Events like these happen annually in honor of Constitution Day, and yesterday's was put on by the Institute of the American Constitutional Heritage and the Department of Political Science. Different from years past where historians were the headliners, this year the series featured a professor from the University of Texas Law School. And he's going to talk about uh, how we draw the line between something that's a more ordinary but scary thing, um, like a, uh, a scary um, uh, political showdown in, in D.C. or something, and what makes something, what takes something to that next, ne to that next level. The whole lecture revolved around our country and if we are indeed in a constitutional crisis. According to a keynote speaker, Stephen Vladkin, it's complicated, but not yet. Um, right, that I think, you know, there are a lot of reasons why where we, the moment we're in right now could be described as a political crisis, but why we're not yet at the point where the institutions have sort of broken down and the checks and balances have stopped working, where we could really call it a constitutional crisis. Vladkin lectured to a crowd of over 150 students and faculty and did not disappoint with his Hamilton and UT references. And tomorrow, the Democratic school teacher who won the special election in West Norman for a state house seat, Jacob Rosecrans, is getting sworn into office. Rosecrans won the election by defeating a Republican businessman in a traditionally GOP district. Rosecrans won with 60% of the votes, vote for the House District 46 seat. He will replace former Republican State Representative Scott Martin, who resigned to take a position as director of the Norman Chamber of Commerce. Still to come on OU Nightly, a strange protester on the South Oval. Plus, NASA is recruiting astronauts. The OSBI is investigating an Okmulgee County Sheriff's deputy following a shooting that wounded two men last Saturday. The deputy was in pursuit of a vehicle containing two people when the driver turned around and drove towards the officer. The deputy then fired several shots, striking the driver and the passenger. The driver, who has been identified as 34-year-old Chris Culberson, is currently hospitalized in an unknown condition. The names of the passenger and the sheriff's deputy have not been released. And Kendall Thorne and Tech Report has some news on why minimum wage workers could no longer be needed for a job. Kendall? Watch out. Robots could be taking over your job. Minimum wage workers could find their jobs in jeopardy due to the evolution of technology. Chain establishments such as McDonald's, Wendy's, and CVS have begun replacing workers with kiosks. The Bureau of Labor and Statistics estimates that over 80,000 fast food jobs will disappear by 2024. But if Wendy's doesn't work out, NASA might be the place for you. With new plans for human space travel, NASA recruited a new class of astronaut trainees. Applicants must have a degree in a STEM-related field, meet certain height requirements, and pass a physical fitness test. Once in space, astronauts spend a majority of their time conducting experiments and doing research. Annual salary ranges from $60,000 to $140,000. And with football season back in session, Vices has created a new form of protection. The Zero One is a helmet that aims to soften the hard blows to the head by absorbing shock with a four-layer system. Developers hope to reduce the risk of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, 
which has been found in 99% of deceased NFL players' brains. The helmet currently retails for $1,500. So do you guys think the Vice's helmet could help prevent CTE? Well, this is an issue that becomes more popular every football season, so I think yes, it's a really good idea. The statistics are pretty crazy with it. Yes, considering how many uh, students could be deterred from starting football, it could be a real issue. Yes. Well, thank you, Kendall. Students took to the South Oval this morning to crowd around one man who appeared to be a member of the KKK. OU Knightley's Harley Toothman reports. Students walked by a strange sight this morning on their way to class. Outside of Gaylord Hall stood this man, Mike. He wore a white robe and held a sign with quotes about savage and superior races. Many students took his sign and robe to mean he's a member of the Ku Klux Klan. But when I asked him if he was a member, his response was surprising. Absolutely not. I despise them and I hope that everyone on campus hates them for what they do. Not the people, but to say, we don't accept your racism. Would you like to talk about it? Because you are very wrong. Mike says he is using the suggestive robes and sign to create dialogue about institutions he thinks are racist, like science and religion. I'm here to expose what OU is doing to the kids under the guise of science and say, take another look, young folks. That's not science. That's white supremacy. While Mike says he is not a Klansman and hates racism, his approach has raised some eyebrows. And I'm just more so confused than anything. It's just like, why would you just go, why would you go about doing this this way when there's so, there's so many, like you open up a dialogue instead, you know, don't come into the campus wearing a KKK uniform, that's just not okay. Obviously he's trying to get attention and obviously he's gotten that attention. Of course he's professing anti-racism and I, I think it's, personally I think it's a really clever way to go about it. Although he drew a crowd, Mike isn't unique. At least a few times a year the South Oval gets special visitors who use the public university grounds to announce their beliefs. Last semester David Bourne took to the South Oval with a megaphone to denounce a different protester who called the Black Lives Matter movement thugs. Harley Toothman. OU Knightley. When asked to comment, OU Press Secretary Matt Epting gave a generic response to distancing the university from speakers like Mike. Oklahoma has a new Teacher of the Year for 2018. After extensive interviews with 12 finalists, the 20-member panel chose Donna Gradell, an environmental science teacher at Broken Arrow Public Schools. Gradell has taught in Broken Arrow for 21 years. Still ahead on OU Nightly, women's tennis gets their season started. And we've got clear skies and some hot temperatures out there. I'll have more coming up next. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm student meteorologist Kaylee Nix. And underneath our blue skies right here at the University of Oklahoma, we have some hot weather going on. 93 degrees right now out here in Norman. Winds out of the south at 18 miles an hour. There are some gusts all the way up to 25 miles an hour. It is hot and muggy out there. Our dew point is 69. Right now, we do have a risk of severe weather um, on our radar for the next day. The Storm Prediction Center has issued an enhanced risk for our friends out here in the northern plains. And then along with that severe weather, we are looking at tracking some showers and storms that are going to move into the area through Wednesday and Thursday. We have our cold front pushing through up here, which is going to lead to those showers and storms to develop over the northern plains, causing that risk. And then we are going to see some showers develop through Wednesday night and into Thursday for our Oklahoma area. They're going to increase for Thursday and then move out for your weekend before we are going to see more showers and storms develop through Friday as well. Right now, across the state, it is hot, like I said. We have heat indices all the way up in the triple digits, 100 out here in Enid, as well as 100 up in Tulsa, 99 here in Norman. That's what it feels like outside right now. Our allergy report, also allergens are pretty high right now. We have weeds all the way up in the very, very high categories, grass trees and mold in the high categories as well. So if you're feeling a little under the weather, those allergies are to blame. Looking ahead to our lows tonight, we have southerly winds keeping us uh, very warm for this time of year. Our normal is 62. We're sitting at 7, 73. That's 11 degrees above normal, and those southerly winds are to blame, and they're not going to quit. As you head out the door in the morning, those winds are going to stick around 10 to 15 miles an hour, warming us up all the way to 94 degrees as you head out uh, by 5 p.m. tomorrow. Highs across the state, once again, just about uh, 10 to 11 degrees above normal. Those winds still sticking around 90s across the entirety of the state, except for out here in Guymon, 83. 
more about what we should be expecting for this time of year. Looking ahead to tomorrow and Thursday, we're going to see another hot day, gusty winds, but then Thursday turns to just being breezy with those PM showers working into Thursday as well. Looking ahead to our next few days, those 90s stick around with those winds out of the south. Friday is our first official day of fall, although it doesn't feel like it. However, looking ahead into the start of next week, we are going to see those showers increase their chances on Sunday and then into Tuesday as well. 30% chance of rain on Thursday for us here in Norman. With those temperatures cooling down to 77, it's going to be a nice relief from that heat. We're going to get a little bit of rain, kind of break it down. Fall is going to start and it's going to feel beautiful out there. We're ready. Uh, we are. <laughs> Absolutely, me too. The Sooners head to Waco this weekend, and Josh Calloway is here to revisit their last trip there. That's right, Cal. We are going to take a little trip down memory lane and also re-preview the 2017 edition of the Sooners' trip to Waco. Sports is up next. Welcome back. The last time the Sooners were in Waco, it was a top 15 matchup with humongous playoff implications. Running back Samaj A.P. Ryan had 166 yards on the ground, and Sterling Shepard added 177 yards receiving in a 44-34 Sooners win that snapped Baylor's then 20-game home winning streak. The win springboarded Oklahoma up the rankings and eventually helped them get a spot in the college football playoff. Baker Mayfield recalls how much that win meant for the program. That was an emotional game for us. Um... You know, thinking about the, the two years before that, how Baylor played against us. Um, so realizing that it's it was a, I wouldn't say it was becoming a rivalry, but it was becoming quite the challenge. And so we didn't, as a program, Oklahoma didn't play well uh, the, the two years before that. So it was, it was an emotional one for us to, you know, get back and, you know, realize we got to play our game. Oh, what a difference a couple of years can make. Two years and one giant scandal later, and the Bears are 0-3 on the season, with losses at home to both Liberty and Texas San Antonio. However, the Sooners know Baylor still has talent and can't afford to take them lightly. Like I said, this is the 2017 football season, and that this is what we're, you know, looking into. You know, we're a brand new team, uh, and, and basically, you know, this is a, a, another, another conference that we got to go through again. And uh, you know, I, I feel like we're going to prepare the right way. We're going to take it a day at a time, take it a game at a time. Moving on to tennis, this week is going to be a pretty busy one for women's tennis. Starting today, Camilla Romero will be kicking off the season in the ITF Lubbock 25K. Then starting on Thursday, four Sooners will be in Houston competing in the Rice Invitational. And lastly, senior Lily Miyazaki will be in Malibu at the ITA Oracle Masters. Odell Beckham Jr. made his season debut last night as the Giants hosted the Lions. Matt Stafford only had 122 yards, but was able to add two touchdowns, which was plenty against the Giants' putrid offense. Eli Manning will get one touchdown pass, but that was about it for the G-men offensively, as they were shut down most of the night. Jamal Agnew would later add a punt return touchdown in the fourth quarter to ice the game for the Lions as they win 24-10. Through two games this season, the Giants have only scored a total of 13 points, which is the lowest for the franchise in the Super Bowl era. And now it's time for everyone's favorite segment, Top Play Tuesday. This week we head out to L.A. where Todd Gurley makes a ridiculous hurdle over Bashaw Breeland. And then rolls in for the touchdown. Typically after a hurdle, a guy loses his balance, but Gurley was able to stay on his feet and get into the end zone. Guys, uh, amazing play by Gurley, but the Rams did not win the game, so I'm sure he would have traded the touchdown for a win, maybe. Definitely, possibly. Still definitely. really impressive, still really impressive. Absolutely. Thank you, Josh. Still to come on OU Nightly, Chipotle customers aren't cheesing about the new queso. If you're a fan of Chipotle, you may not have tasted the new queso. The fast food chain rolled out the new queso last week, but customers just aren't impressed. It has been described as gritty, a crime against cheese, and even that it tastes like crowns. And speaking of gritty, it's International Talk Like a Pirate Day. So if you're inclined, you can try the queso, and if you don't like it, just say, Arr. <laughs> Yes. It's pretty Kaylee, funny, guys. what do you well, have for us today? 
Also on that day, you know, Mexico City is reeling from that 7.1 magnitude earthquake that hit them today. But 37 uh, years ago, there was actually another earthquake that hit in 8.1, and that earthquake killed 12,000 people. Wow, not good. Well, thanks for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by the Gaylor College at the University of Oklahoma. We'll see you back here tomorrow night live at 4.30. Have a great evening. Good night.